Hello everyone, hope you are doing well. We will be continuing our series by covering chapter 5 from the book Java Precisely by Peter Sestoff. Chapter 5 covers types, and we will go over what they are and the different kinds of types that Java has and everything in between. Um, for this video, we will focus on primitive and reference types. So let's just get started. To begin, what is the type? A type is a set of values, and these values tend to have operations you can perform on them. Okay, so hold on to that definition for a second. There are two main categories of types. You have primitive types, and you have reference types. Primitive types are types predefined by Java, and are named with reserved keywords or have reserved names. These sets of values come with the coding language, and there are eight of them. And they are byte, short, int, long, float, double, boolean, and char. They are essentially the fundamental building blocks for data structures in Java, and they cannot be broken down into simpler components. Reference types are types that contain the reference or the address location of objects that are created. They are also sometimes described as class types because they are defined using a class declaration. A class in Java is a reference type including the ones that you create. So besides a class, there are other kinds of reference types in Java. An annotation, an array, an enum, an interface are all reference types because as the definition says, they hold the reference to objects created in memory. For Java, there is a clear distinction between primitive and reference types. Primitive types are the fundamental data types which directly contain the value of the type. So like an int or a double directly holds the value of those types. And from these fundamental types, other types are created, such as arrays or strings. So that's why we can have an integer array or a double array or an array full of character values. Um, and lastly, if you want to know the difference between a reference type and a primitive type, usually you can tell because primitive types have no methods associated with them. I will have a link in the description below to an article that expands more on this idea than the book did. So feel free to check it out if you want to know more about reference types and primitive types. And that will be all for this video and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you and bye.